Yeah, and today we're interviewing Andre, who is also, he's a new moderator for the group. How are you doing, yes, Andre? Congratulations. Yeah. Doing really well and enjoying being a moderator. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's awesome. So, Andre, tell us um, where you're located and what was <clears throat> it like growing up for you, just your, your kind of your childhood, and then did you grow up in a religious or musical family at all? Okay, so... Um, Perhaps start off with where I'm at. Um, I'm actually like on the other side of the planet from where you guys are at. Um, I'm in a country called Malaysia, uh, which is in Southeast Asia. So it's south of Thailand. So Thailand's my neighbor to the north and Singapore is my neighbor down to the south. Okay. Um, I, I, I am half Singaporean. My dad's Singaporean. My mom is okay. Malaysian. Um, but I was born and raised in Malaysia uh, and I'm a Malaysian. Uh, my psyche is Malaysian. Um. I, I did come from a religious family, but I wasn't born a believer. Um, in fact, when I was born, I was born, first I was a Buddhist. And at some point of time, my family became Hindus. Um, and when I was about 10, I guess, uh, well, we all started uh, becoming Christians. And, and it, was a, it was a very interesting story. Um, one of my uncles, um, he and his, well, Half of my family now live in the States. And uh, the uncle that uh, first went, my uncle Howard, uh, he moved to Texas. He ended up going to uh, Kenneth Copeland's church and he, he, he got saved. He became a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I, I may have some doctrinal issues with, with, with his church, but I, I got to thank the Lord that he actually went and got saved because um, my uncle, uh, being the zealous Hindu he was, uh, when he gave his life to the Lord, became a zealous Christian. And so when he came back from the States to visit his family here in Malaysia, he brought the gospel with him. That's and cool. I think that was, the, that was the best gift he could have, have, yeah. have given us. Hey, God and so, um, thing, right? Amen. You know, and so, uh, so he, he brought the gospel. Uh, so um, my mom got saved. Uh, she brought me to church. I, I got saved with her. We wanted to bring our brother. And then my brother was really, it was really funny. My older brother, you know, you're like, okay, come to church with us. And he he looked at my mom and said, you know what, uh, mom, I've been sneaking off to church three years before oh. you guys got saved. And yeah, he just kept quiet. Yeah, oh, wow. he didn't tell no one about it. So he was the first one that went, went to church and he didn't tell us about it. And, you know, so, you know, we just started getting, uh, you know, uh, saved one by one. And um, so the other part of my family that did not become Christians eventually became Catholic. So we're like Ireland right now. Huh. So is, is, are are there persecution for Christians in your country, or is that a, is that a thing or or not? Um. Okay. So. Uh, yes and no. Um. So I I think one thing that's uh good about Malaysia is I think Malaysia as a country is generally um fairly modern in 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 the mindset. So it's not very. It's not it's not very influenced by the the Middle Eastern uh, events. Um. So that has changed a little bit over the last maybe 10 years. Um, okay. There's a, a, slight, a slight push towards some uh, area of fundamentalism. But I think what has really been holding things back is that Malaysia is a very unique country. It's made out um, so there, there are different states. Each state has a king. And they, they kind of rotate, I think, every five years or so. Uh, you know, one of them becomes like the supreme king. And so in, in Malaysia, the, the highest... Uh, uh, religious leader uh if you're a muslim is the king you know and kings the kings in malaysia are generally very tolerant people and so they they keep the peace and you know we're blessed that we have very good kings you know so uh persecution i wouldn't say i wouldn't say persecution but uh you know there's just a perception you know about christians that are are, are wrong uh from the general population that is Muslim, uh, you know, so mm -hmm. a lot of Muslims will look at you and say, hey, you know, you, you pray to three gods, you know, and, you know, that's not true. So they, they fail to understand certain concepts, for example. Sure. Um, but for the most part, you know, um, the Christians in, in, in Malaysia would rather we focus on what's similar rather than what's different, because it's really quite different to be, be living under 
you know, a country uh, where the, the majority is Muslim. It, it's different from the States. Uh, you know, you, you probably have a lot less liberties as well. Like, uh, I, I can't invite my Muslim friend to church. Oh, wow. You know, it's, it's, it's a serious crime. Really? Wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a serious crime. Yeah, serious crime. So th there's some things like that. Um, they, can, they can go on their own, though. They just can't be invited. No. Um, so um, if you actually, if you're Muslim and you, you convert and become a Christian, um, they, the Arabic word for that is murtad or apostasy, and it's punishable by death. I just keep um, reminding a lot of um, my Christian brothers as well. You know, if, if you kind of dial back the clock, maybe four or 500 years ago it, in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, 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 the Catholic Church was doing the same as well. You oh, know, absolutely. Uh, they were doing that to Muslims. They were doing that to Jews. They were doing that to Protestants, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've learned a long time ago that at the end of the day, it's, it's not religion that's going to save you or define you, you know, uh, it's, it's really the relationship you have in God, which is why it's very important just to read your Bible and, and speak to God and, and know God. Because, you know what, uh, there are lots of people that might have the right fundamental theologies, but if their heart's not right, they just end up being Pharisees, you know, <laughs> and, and you'll just be, you'll just be some form of the same thing. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I choose not to. So, so Malaysia is a little bit different. Um, and so uh, suffice to say, getting Christian mail is not easy <laughs> as well in Malaysia. So when I was growing up, uh, you know, discovering Christian mail was strange, actually. <laughs> it, 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 it was odd because, um, you know, we used to have Christian bookstores and, uh, you know, you, you'd get odd cassettes and CDs. Uh, come in by accident uh -huh. like I, I remember uh, I, I walked in at a bookstore one day so the run of the mill rock uh, you know cassettes and CDs and you uh, I could find when I was growing up were like uh, White Heart Petra you know that, that uh -huh. kind of stuff you know uh, you know all the AOR you know uh, mm -hmm. easy to listen kind of kind of rock right but I had walked into a, a, a music store once looked on the shelf and seen Seven Angel Lehman for the Wary and I'm like what man is this? You're right? And so the game changer for me was uh, I actually saw a Heaven's Metal double disc once and I bought that. Nice. And that was the, the CD that uh, that helped me discover mortification. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of set me towards, some, uh, you know, a heavier style of music. And, you know, um, when we wanted to get like Christian rock cassettes and CDs, we'd, we'd go down to Singapore. And uh, like I told you just now, uh, Jimmy, so this is one of the first... Christian rock bands that I bought with my own money, uh, Vengeance. And, uh, you know, kind of like helped me to, you know, uh, discover like the heaviest side of Christian rock. So, and, and we didn't know what we we're looking at because, you know, uh, there, there was no Christian radio stations or anything. We just go over to the store, look at the covers and hmm, this looks cool. Okay, we'll just buy this, ah. you know. Yeah, and then that's where well, it went. What was your favorite uh, band off of that compilation? I actually have that on, uh, I have the cassette box, box set. Of the HM. So the one that really, okay, the few tracks that really blew me away, um, I think uh, you you get what you pray for by Tourniquet was amazing. I, yeah. I thought that was, that was amazing. It's really good speed metal, blew me away. The Crucified, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I remember and, I had that compilation too, by the way. You probably got oh, it stored away somewhere. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, but it was mortification, man, guys. Uh, I, I mean, because when I heard, uh, you know, it, it was a track called, I think, The Destroy Me Holes. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the first time I, I heard Death Growls. Oh, wow. Right? You know, because up to that point, right, I was like, you know, maybe some Striper, yeah, maybe Barry Cross. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. about it. And, and, I mean, uh, Roger Martinez wasn't particularly Death Growls at the time. You right, know, so he was, right. you know, kind of track. So when I heard Steve Rowe, you know, do that to destroy people's kind of thing. I was like, wow, what was that? Right. And so, you know, I uh, it took me like about a year and a half to to eventually get that cassette oh, wow. uh, in because I, I had to wait for a friend to fly over to LA and you know I was like, hey, I was like, dude, when you get to LA, just get to a Christian store and can you get this mortification album for me? So he did one better. Uh, I think that was 1991. But by the, the time he got around to it, it was 1992, and he bought oh, two mortification albums, and Scrolls was out, and he's like, hey, dude, I found another mortification album, so I just bought it for you, and Scrolls was, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it was amazing. So, um, 
I actually named my first band after a, a song from Scrolls, which is Necromancide. So mm. and that was my band in the nineties as well. Okay. Um, and, 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 yeah. So so there were two necro necromancides at the time. So the other one was from Brazil. Okay. Yeah. That- yeah. It's just, so uh, I think the Brazilian guys were independent for a bit. We got signed first. And then, mm-hmm. so uh, I think because of that, they decided to change their name and it became what, Necromany Cider or something. Like that. So yeah. it, it, was, it was just, quite honestly, I, I think it would have been fine if we both had the same name, you know? So, so like, is, it wasn't your, your band was the first Christian band to be signed in Malaysia, Christian metal band? Asia. In Asia. Wow. In Asia. So we, we were the first, the second one was Kakao. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's pronounced Kakal, but I think a lot of American guys would call it Kakal. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's Kakal, the Indonesian band. So, in mm-hmm. fact, uh, if, if if you if you look at, uh, I think the first full length, uh, you'll see my name on the thank you list as well, because you know we used to, to to talk to Jeffrey quite a fair bit. Oh, okay. So it it it, it was us. It was it was uh, Kakal, and then there were a few other bands that kind of uh, came yeah. on after a while. Oh, yeah. Kakal is an awesome band, man. Uh, in fact, mm-hmm. Indonesia has got some really. Yeah, amazing band. Um, so they're they're just not too far from where we're at. Um, so if I hop on a plane, I could get to Indonesia, uh, in an hour if I'm going to Sumatra, or if I was going to the capital of Indonesia, two hours. It's oh. not that far. Mm-hmm. My, my my wife is actually from Indonesia. Uh, I am partially Indonesian as well from my mom's side. Nice, cool. So cool. Indonesia has got a, a a very good uh a culture. Um, they've got some very good uh, Christian black metal bands. There's a band called Sebaud, which are uh, uh, friends of mine. They're from Jogja. Okay. Uh, and they sing, sing in the traditional uh, language of the region, you know, Japanese and, 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 and Indonesian. And uh, it's quite interesting. Mm. And uh, th- there's a very good band I, I, I discovered recently. It's called The Enemy of Satan. Sounds really good. You know, um, so that's a scene there. Uh, Malaysia, uh, we, we didn't have a Christian metal scene. So, Necromanicide had to kind of tour with you know a lot of the mainstream bands that were here. So we mm. were in the mainstream metal scene for a bit. Mm. Yeah, but that was in the 90s, man. <laughs> yeah, I just remember how yeah. I heard ne- ne- Necromanicide. I think it was from HM, I think uh HM yep. band a couple of times. We had we had distributors in, in the US at that time. Um it was a company called Cross Rhythms. And yeah, I think they were, they were yeah, yeah cross, We've been cross talking rooms, about it. Yeah, and uh, what's the name of this guys uh, down uh, in, in Norway? Uh, uh, Nordic, they're still uh, around. Nordic. Uh, Nordic metal. Uh, Nordic metal. Yeah. 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 So, so Nordic metal was also doing doing some of our uh, CDs down in in Europe as well. Mm-hmm. Um. So Necromancy was an interesting story, man. So we were signed to a a, a mainstream label. We were going around playing shows. I mean, this this were the days when your record label would actually arrange shows for you and you'd, you'd go play. And I, I remember, um, you know, we'd play in bars. And so mm-hmm. there would be an open there would be an open tab so you could just help yourself to any drinks, the label pay, just go drink, right? And uh, mm-hmm. I found myself in a lot of trouble after that because I, I, I'd be really drunk after shows. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and it, ended up being a, it ended up being a problem because we were a Christian band. And I, I remember after one, I remember after one show, I was just sitting on a bar, right? I was, I was sloshed. I was like really drunk, and the Holy Spirit decides to speak to me when I'm drunk, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit says to me, "Wow, weren't you on the stage like just a few moments ago, telling everybody about the love of Christ and how He could save you and deliver you from all your sins, and now you're at the back in the bar, drunk." And I can tell you, when the Holy Spirit decides to talk to you like that, you got to listen. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember I, I had a, it, it was a tough one, man. I had to go to the band. And I'm like, guys, I don't think we can go on. I, I have an issue and I need to fix it. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, I, I have no business uh, standing on a stage, uh, you know, uh, talking about God's love and my life is like that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm having this issue with drinking. And so basically the, the band broke up and uh, that was a long time ago. That was like, I think, 26, 27 years ago. Okay. And wow. I, 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 I kind of, you know, so we had a career. Uh, I, I, I stepped out of it because, you know, it, it wasn't right. And uh, I started serving the church trying to get my life right. And I, I ended up stopping playing uh, metal for like 23 years. I was just doing, just mainly worship music uh, until, the, you know, um, the whole lockdowns happened. 
<laughs> you know, uh, worldwide because of COVID-19. And mm. all these lockdowns were very depressing. But it also meant that I had a few extra hours uh, every day because I was commuting to work, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, was, I was writing songs and stuff. So I was, uh, you know, I was actually trying to, to kickstart uh, Necromanicide again. Um, but for some funny reason, it just, it, it just didn't work out. And I, I think uh, the, the two other members of the group decided, you know, just do another project. You know, I was a bit, you know, like I, I didn't know what to do with it. But, you know, God was like, hey, you know what? Um, why didn't you just you know, uh, see what's going on in Christian scene right now. So, you know, being out of the scene for 23 years, right, I actually went on, on Facebook and I typed Christian metal and lo and behold, the Christian metal group came out. <laughs> nice. I love and, that. <laughs> and, you know, I, I was just kind of looking at the stuff that was there. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is where, you know, metal's at. And because I logged into that, um, you know, the algorithm actually... You know, something else came up. You might know this. And, you know, uh, Rod Whaler's, uh, the Rod Whaler mm-hmm. records, uh, I did, came out on Facebook. And I was like, hmm, is that a Christian label? And I looked at it, yeah, it's a Christian label. So I actually sent one song to them. And uh, and, and the guy on the other end was actually Sean, uh, you know, the, the old owner of uh, Rod Whaler. And so he, he sends me a contract and a note that says, hey, yeah, I, I like the song. Uh, let's pray about this. You know, wow. well, to make to make the long story short, we got signed uh, uh, with uh, a Rod Whaler. And um, so the, I decided to name the new uh, project Shamash, which is Hebrew for servant, you know, uh, because I felt that that really should be the ministry of, of what a band's uh, about. You know, it's about ministry to people. Because, um, you know, when, when I did metal the first time around, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I just wanted to be a rock star. You know, I wanted to do God's work, but I wanted to be a rock star. And I think the motivations were wrong, you know. So yeah. being knocked around for 23 years kind of puts perspective, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. so I'm like, you know what? I, I think I just want to serve with this one. And so um, we did an EP, uh, Suffering Servant. And uh, I remember, mm-hmm. man, January 6, 2021, Suffering Servant was number one CMW Loud for one week. And uh, I, I I remember, you know, um, uh, Sean sends me a message. He's like, dude, go check out uh, the CMW charts. I'm like, what's going on? I looked at it. I'm like, I don't see anything. And he says, look at the top. And Suffering Servant was number one on the top. Wow. And uh, and I was I was sitting there. I'm like, I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. And so, you know, we had five songs in the EP. And we had like three songs across uh, 10 you know, uh, and and they did really well that year. Um, I what was year, just what really, year was this? Uh, twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. That's awesome. So, through Facebook, you found a record label through our Facebook group, and that's got, right. And that's so cool, man. I love to hear that. I know that's yeah. great. <laughs> so, yeah, but but you you gotta realize, guys, uh, twenty three years of not even looking at metal, right? You know. I mean, the, the heaviest I got was like, you know, some worship track that I'll be jamming out and, you know, I'll just just put a little bit of gain on it just to, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, but so getting back into metal was quite a task because I think uh, metal has moved on quite a fair bit. Sure. You know? um, so, uh, so I was not doing metal like since what, 97, 98 probably. That's and uh, I, I, come, I come back and I'm listening to all these new metal tracks and all of a sudden, there are things called breakdowns. You know, breakdowns. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, are very different. You know, the way I remember breakdowns. Yeah. To me, uh, break, breakdowns were like Slayer breakdowns. You know, like now breakdowns are like right. Oh yeah, like really slow. Yeah, coming from hardcore basically. Yeah, yeah, and sludgy. So I'm listening to that. I'm like, okay. And, and and to make matters worse, twenty three years of doing worship music means that I you know I, I I can do death growls, but I'm appreciating I'm appreciating you know uh, melodic singing uh, singing as well. So you know I, I just don't want to have just death growls. I also want to have cleans as well. And mm-hmm. plus you know I've been doing lots of choir work, so I just want to have some choir work as well in there. And you know just, so that's why you got that whole Gregorian thing that happens in in Shamash's music as well. Mm-hmm. That whole Latin uh, thing. So. And you'll probably yeah. hear more of it in the the newer Shamash materials as well. So, yeah. I love <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm interested in. Um, so, how many instruments do you play? 
and Me? what got you started playing the instruments and, and even what got you started doing vocals. Okay. So I started off as a drummer, uh, simply okay. being because I wanted, I wanted to learn piano, uh, my mom sent me to get an evaluation from a teacher and the teacher told my mom, your son's tone deaf, he's hopeless. You know, he, he, he won't be able to play any instrument. So uh, it, it, it destroyed me uh, for a bit. Um, so so I, I learned drums, you know, and, you know, I just could not accept that. And so I'd pick up the guitar and, you know, play. And, you know, I realized that I wasn't tone deaf. It's just that I just wasn't very good at singing at that point of time. I didn't really get the training I needed. Mm -hmm. And so I... I I got up to my grade five for drums and I started picking up the guitar. Um, actually, I wanted to be a drummer, you know, truth be told. It's just that I couldn't find a good enough guitarist. Mm -hmm. So I ended up picking up the guitars temporarily and ended up just being a guitarist. Uh, same with vocals. I couldn't find a decent enough vocalist. So I ended up singing and just ended up being a vocalist. So, you know, by accident. If none of that happened, I'd, I'd probably be a drummer. <laughs> nice. Yeah. This is a long story. So I do I do keys as well. I do bass. Uh, um, yeah. So you know, in in, in a worship worship team in church, I'm basically the the guy that fills in the guys that don't turn up. You know, so <laughs> that's basically my job. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically where it is. I love it. Well, so one thing I was uh, when you were talking about touring with Asia and all that uh, in Asia and, and all the different bands. I was curious, are there, do y'all have uh, something like a Buddhist metal bands or Muslim? Do they actually know that's not a thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not a thing at all. So um, the band is, the bands in the mainstream scene in Malaysia, um, they're all very, um, okay, they're all, they're all, they're all Muslim guys. Okay. But the image that they have is very, you know, pentagrams, demons, you know, oh, but, wow. but, but, they're actually, but they're actually practicing Muslims. It's, it's just a persona that yeah. they'll put on. Um, and I've got to say, um, they're not really good guys in the scene in Malaysia. And um, they didn't really care so much that we're a Christian band, you know. I mean, to them, you know, you, you know you're, just, you're just a metal band. Your music so, is good. Yeah, you're one of us. Come hang out with like us. I, you know? I feel like there is one. Uh, there's like a Chinese Buddhist metal band or something I've seen before. I don't know. I just didn't know if that was a thing out in your area. But yeah, I think I've seen a couple of Buddhist bands and even a couple of Muslim bands before metal bands. But it's definitely very rare. Pro in pro fact, pro probably say, um, Necrophages, for example, um, Muhammad. Who, of course, you know about his name. He's a he's a Muslim. I didn't know that, but I I found that out later. I was like, oh wow. Practicing Muslim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There is, uh, okay, but I know, I know that there, uh, I'm not sure about Muslim bands or Buddhist bands, but I know uh, there's a very good um, Vedic Hindu black metal band called Hudra. Okay. And so they, yeah, they would actually sing Vedic songs, uh, you know, uh, uh, very cool band. They're from Singapore uh, and they're very famous in India. They're basically, they're ethnically Indian, but they're Singaporean. And they do this like Vedic black, so it's like black. But it, you know, they're, they're chanting, they're chanting sutras, Hindu sutras, and stuff like that. So it's really cool stuff, you know. Um, but like I said, you know, uh, I'm just very careful about what I play. So, <laughs> but, but I, but but they're cool guys. They're cool guys. And I know the label that signed them actually did have a Muslim metal band, but I just can't remember what's the name of the band in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess they are, they are, um, I mean, look, th there's Jewish metal bands as well, like Orphan Land and, you know, a few other bands, uh, Salem. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, but in Malaysia, it's just very bland. It's just mainstream metal. And it, then, you know, you have people like us that don't really quite conform to it, which is why Shamash, uh, you know, we just ended up skipping the Malaysian scene and just signing up with Rod Whaler because... I thought that that would probably be of better service because I think uh, in the United States, for example, I think more people appreciate the message that we have. Yeah. Um, but but there are there are a lot of labels in Malaysia that are expressing interest to to actually have our materials out on on their labels as well. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was a ministry at the end of the day, man. It's just about reaching out to people. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely is. Wow. Yeah, one. That's the help. 
<laughs> wow. Well, so yeah, let's um yo. So we know that you actually just became a moderator in the Christian mm -hmm. Congratulations, yes. first of all. I know it's I was about to it's say a you've been in a culture shock, but I mean you've been in the group for a while, so you um uh, you know at least a little bit about um what we have done and what we've had to deal with like both good and bad so what's your favorite thing about being a moderator and then what were you most surprised or shocked about <laughs> wow okay so, so so this is a tough one to answer but you know what uh, i'm just going to be as candid as i can so before I became a moderator, right, I think the, the first thing that was always in my mind was like, what's wrong with this group? Why are people so negative? You know, why are everybody just, you know, arguing and stuff like that? So, you know, the first thing that you, you'd all, the first thing that always crossed your mind is, dude, are the moderators doing anything about this? You know, now being a moderator and, and see what happens behind the scenes. <laughs> I I I understand. In fact, it it just took me one hour to understand. Just looking at <laughs> yeah. the, the buzz that was happening, and 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 I realized that actually, if everyone could understand, um, or at least have some visibility of what's going on, uh, you know, behind the scenes, they'd really appreciate what the the mods and the admins are doing. It's it's not an easy task dealing mm -hmm. with forty five thousand people, and you know people. Well, we people are people. We're only a few hundred away from uh, fifty thousand now, and that's yeah, what I oh tell my. people. I, people message me and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe this person said that in the group." And I'm like, "Dude, there's fifty thousand people from all over the world with different backgrounds, from atheist to tra very traditional to all different types of denominations." I mean, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and uh, and even Jay's in there. I mean, come on, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> So, and, I'm not, you know, no, I'm just... and we got we yeah. even got Australians in there. Some people don't even believe in Australia, but they're, they're there. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> uh, I've, I've I've actually been to Australia twice. Oh, nice. Yeah, me too. Or man. have or have I? Uh, oh, right. Or, exactly. ha or have I? Yeah. I, mean, I tell you, those from from where I am, uh, and that's just I have to fly to California first, and then it's like a like a 15 hour or like I think going it was actually like maybe 17 hours but coming back was more like 13 hours or something like that but it's it's a lot dude it's like yeah man, so yeah, um better exist. So <laughs> Australia is so big uh I think the closest part of Australia to Malaysia is three hours that's Perth um mm -hmm. the farthest would be like where Melbourne and Sydney is at so that's like eight or nine hours Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could be anything from three to nine hours uh, to uh, Australia first, um, and so there are lots of Malaysians in Australia. So if you go to Melbourne, if you if you were to take a stone and just randomly throw it, you probably hit a Malaysian or a Singaporean. Oh yeah, absolutely. Or, there was yeah. I saw a lot of Asians and overall, and then definitely definitely Malaysians. I mean, going to the mall and yeah, it was like dang. It was <laughs> You you guys are gonna love Malaysia because Malaysia, Malaysia is like a melting pot of different races. So you you walk in, so you see guys that kind of look like me that are kind of Chinese. Then you see guys that look like they're kind of Indian, and then you see guys that kind of uh, look like they're Polynesian or Malay, right? And and, and you, you see a bunch of white guys that were pretty common, and then you know you'll see guys that are so fair and they're like from Central Asia. So Malaysia is kind of like a, a melting pot, um, mm -hmm. and the food's awesome. You, you guys should. Take a trip to Malaysia. Oh yeah, def definitely gonna I'm make that happen to. for sure. At some at some point, we're gonna do a big Christian metal group tour. Oh, man. The world. That would be so <laughs> that's what we should do, man. And I'm I'm gonna feed you guys silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's good. I would like I would I would definitely love it. I would love it. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> excuse me. So about you know more about um Christian metal group. I think that. You know, you were talking earlier about the um, the pandemic. I think mm -hmm. because people were sitting at home, I think the group grew so much during the pandemic. It was crazy. In fact, I think that was one of the biggest things that um, influenced uh, the decision to get a bunch of moderators. Like, it was so much going on. Like, it had always grown, but it seemed like during the pandemic, mm -hmm. it just went crazy. And here's the thing uh, that surprised me the most is that um, 
we grew a lot during the pandemic, but it hasn't stopped growing. Like it's it's been it's been steady growing like a lot more. Cause I've been in the group since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least, you know, like 2013, 2014 ish, you know? Yep. So yeah, I was at, I was in a yeah, and you know, for a while it was like, you know, okay, that's about, you know, ten thousand and then like maybe, you know, eighteen hundred and it was like sitting there for a while. <laughs> but then all of a sudden it's like, you know, once it got past oh. twenty thousand and just never stopped, just constantly. Constantly I mean, 45,000 um, uh, uh, people in, in one chat group is an excellent platform for 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 us as, as moderators and admins to minister to people and mm -hmm. to make sure that the, you know the right amount of information is disseminated. I think one of one of the things that uh, has been very interesting for me and frustrating at the same time is that um, you have 45,000 people there should be a lot of conversation about different bands, new bands, unheard bands, unsigned oh, bands, yeah. independent bands. But all, all we hear are just the same old usual suspects. And not that it's a bad thing, you know, um, like the new Demon Hunter posting was uh, quite interesting for me because I thought it was a really good song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I, I just think that um, bands like these don't really need the kind of platform, you know. There are a lot of really good independent bands from Brazil, Mexico, that could use that platform that we should be talking about. A lot of you know, people, uh, a lot of people share those views and, and we totally get it. But I mean, uh, it's just like when you talk, I know you're talking about demon hunter and skillet and striper, right? For the yeah. most part, but, <laughs> but in theocracy, they're, they're a newer, you know, newer than uh, those bands, but, but that's just what, that's what oh, you got to realize. That's what people know too. So like oh, yeah, everybody sure. knows yep. the band red and skillet, that's what in disciple or whatever, that's what they're going to talk about. They may not be familiar with all these others, but that's why we're doing our part. I mean, like how many that's of right. the people that are, uh, you know, they only listen to switch, maybe switch foot and skillet and mm -hmm. skillet's the hardest thing that, that they've heard. Mm -hmm. When we do this interview and they're, and they're like, Shama, 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 what, <laughs> what is that? So, so that? check that out and learn something new. Right. Yeah, that's right. What, that's what's right. the name of that band? What does the name mean, by the way? Shamash. Mm -hmm. So, so if you if you walk into a synagogue, you know mm -hmm. you you have that little you have a, a menorah. Mm -hmm. You know, what, guys, just give me a second. I'll I'll, I'll show you what it is. Okay. Just give me a second. All um, right. There we go. You got the logo on the screen behind him. Oh yeah, I know. I love it. Right. Yeah. We get education in these interviews, man. Education. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so this is a menorah. Okay. This is an actual menorah. I, ha I had one in my kitchen. So you'll notice they have different branches over here, right? Mm -hmm. So this center one over here, uh, you can actually detach it and light the others. This is called the shamash. Okay. Oh, okay. It, 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 it literally means servant. Or the other word for shamash, the, 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 the correct translation would be ritual servant. Okay. And of course, the name so of the first name Mm -hmm. ritual yeah service. okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so now it, you take that candle the small candle and you light other candles okay. and that's truly what it, it means you take the fire that god has given you and you light others ah, okay. and, and that's always been the vision of shamash by the way yeah so, are you the only member in the band the three of us um okay. it's myself uh alex and uh, Darren, so three of us, the three guys. Yeah, it's a project of three guys. Uh, I started off Shamash, but yeah, it was three guys. And, and they they live uh, near you. Did it... uh, all within fifteen minutes by car, so not that far. Okay, it's not we're bad. all just yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, Malaysia is not that big, so if we we all live in 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 a in a common valley called the Klang Valley. So just yeah, yes, yeah, so we're far, gonna rehearse it. <laughs> um. Well, there's a studio uh, at Darren's place. Uh, sometimes I would just, you know, uh, record stuff on my my tracks and just send them, and then they'll just listen to it and practice where they're at. Um, Alex has his own studio as well, so that's why I normally do my vocals these days. Okay, so do y'all yeah, have quite a few places? Are there any plans to ever to tour at all? Ah, oh, that's a real tough one. Uh, it's a tough one simply being because Darren actually has his own band. Uh, we're kind of like a side gig for him. He's, he he plays in a very popular band in Malaysia called An Honest Mistake. 
which is like a pop punk band. And Darren actually got voted as the best vocalist in Asia, I think about three years ago, and he, I think he won. Oh wow! So I I can't remember I can't remember what polls that was. Um, so he he's quite an enigmatic figure in the music scene. He's quite popular, and I think uh, even a few weeks back, uh, his other band announced me saying they were actually uh, they were one of the candidates for the best indie band in Malaysia. So yeah. he's like, yeah, that like that's his main thing. So he's you know we're kind of like his side project. <laughs> it's my main project, but it's his side project. And then uh, Alex mostly does worship music in in church these days. Okay. Uh, and and all of us are corporate guys. I run a business, so playing shows is tough. You know, I during the lockdown, someone actually was like, "Do you want to play Wacken?" I'm like, "I've not played the show in a really long time." Well. The last show I played was a worship thing in church. I'm not sure. So, yeah, but, you know, I think we are we are thinking about it. You know, it's about time. I've actually had quite a lot of requests. Yeah, we think, we're thinking really hard about it. Because I think one of the other problems that we have is we don't actually have a drummer. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's also a problem. So it simply means that we may need a live drummer, at least for a start. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I could do stuff on an album, but you know, live I I, I can't be doing guitars, drums, and vocals at the same time. So <laughs> I think we got a um, horde, uh, you know, the uh, group Jason had. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that that's a good band, man. <laughs> yeah, he J- was a very talented guy, man. Oh yeah, that's my dude right there, and he would uh he would sing or should I say shriek and uh and play drums at the same time, of course. Yeah. So, so I remember. Um, he, the, I think the first one that he did was was not called Horde. It was called Behead Off. Behead Off. Yep. And and uh, the, what my heart will uh, my heart be just the Oh yeah. man! I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that track was amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That track was crazy. Yeah. I I, I, I really I really love what he's doing, and I I think uh, Revulse is an amazing band. Mm-hmm. as well so well you know like I said the, the scenes uh, moved quite a fair bit uh, since I was at in the 90s so Shamash has been evolving so I think if you've heard stuff from uh, Suffering Servant I think you'd be quite surprised when you listen to the new the new album that's coming out so how would you describe uh, musically the Shamash to people who've not heard it before it's a tough one because I don't think uh, I don't think it, it, it will fit the kind of conventions that everybody uh, you know would want to look at. Like some people will be, oh, is it death metal? Kinda. Uh, is it chorish? Well, kinda. Uh, is it melodic? Yeah, kinda. Because it's also got choirs and stuff like that. And we've got a few tracks where I actually write songs not to Western skills but Middle Eastern makams. Like if you if you went in and checked out uh, the War for Jerusalem. The, the scales are Middle Eastern scales. Mm. And we've got Middle Eastern ouds and stuff like that. So um, I think I've come to a point whereby I just don't want to write songs. Uh, you know, that's okay. I have a general rule. If I'm going to write songs, I don't want two songs to sound the same. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just a general rule that I have because um, the thing that really kind of irks me is, you know, you buy a CD and the first yeah. track right up to the last track just sounds like the same song, you know, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's not going to work for me, man. You know, uh, so interesting you know. that you say that because um, when you said that, that reminded me there is a Christian band, metalcore band that will not be named. I will keep them ma- nameless, but I listened to their CD like just years ago, like oh, really popular it? band. And every song, you know, of course it's metalcore and and maybe some death type of influence too. But every song was in the same key, and you know, you're already doing like a certain genre of music. Who, so, who is that? Who are you talking about? No, uh, no, they they'll remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but but you know what? Uh, so the thing is this, Jay. Um, it's okay if it's the same key because I understand you like to chug on an yeah, open yeah, note yeah, and yeah. it you gives you. But you know what? Um, you you can have every song on the album in the key of drop A and one sixty BPM, like every song, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you you can have the same formula for every song. You yeah. you, you know it's got to be exactly. different. That's, That's exactly what was going on. It was like all the above, and I'm just like, 
wow, people yeah. don't. Of course, people that don't like maybe have perfect pitch or whatever, or you know, like you can, I can hear a note and you know know what it is, you know. So I'm able to pick up music easily, like learning. It definitely helps out with learning, but everything else becomes like boring, or I'm critiquing everything like too much because of it. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> oh man, I was like, hey, this is so boring, and then you know. A lot, just a lot of hardcore bands overall, a lot of metalcore bands. Like I said, just doing everything is like, is everything gonna be, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah. wow. They get, you know, no new riffs, you know. So yeah, I it's just horrible. Get that. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, uh, one, one of the biggest problems with uh, doing music is that, you know, people just get very comfortable with just writing songs based on formulas. Mm hmm. Um, and, and so, you know, um, you, you're going to have to like tell the story. Like, uh, so I have songs that actually have Latin chorals in it. And I wrote those Latin chorals, right? Parts. Yeah. And, you know, I, and I, I just added it to some, you know, metal. And I, I think I might have let you uh, listen to some of the demos that yeah. I had. Yeah. You know, so. Um, yeah. And so you've heard a few songs. They don't mm -hmm. sound the same. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's the same band. It's the same band, you know, it's the same band, but it's just mm -hmm. not the same. So. Every song has to be approached from a very different concept. And in fact, even the story that it alludes to has to be very, very different as well. You yes. know? And I yeah. think so that's good. very important. I love it. So uh, you, talk, you mentioned uh, BPMs the other, uh, just a few minutes ago. So does your band have any JPMs requirements? <laughs> you know what JPMs so, are? I have no idea. What's the acronym? Jesus, Jesus per minute. Dude, this is a great question because I was going <laughs> to ask Similar to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So have you, have you okay. heard that term before? And I, I, I have, but uh, but not as an acronym. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do YPMs as in Yeshua's per minute. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's, sorry, I'm, I'm struggling to brain that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. No, no, you're good. You're good. That's so funny. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, do you, do you feel any pressure to um uh so some people do feel pressure, I guess, to have to include like a scripture or mentions of Jesus per minute or per song. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, what you know, do you, do you are you like okay, I gotta mention Jesus every song, or do you feel comfortable like writing about various topics? Do you feel like oh, you can't be a Christian band if you you know. If every other song or every song doesn't uh, tell a Bible story, no, you know what, uh, guys? I get let, let me put it this way: you, you can sing songs about God, and you know you, you just don't have to mention God. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't have to mention Jesus, but you can you can tell stories about a God. You know, um, I think people just push it overboard when everything's just you know you got to mention the word Jesus. You got to mention the word Jesus. Um, I think some of the greatest testimonies may not necessarily have the, the word Jesus in it. You know, mm -hmm. I think some of the greatest witness you can bear is just being a nice person. And, and you know, and then when you get, yeah. Look, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to the whole silent witness thing. I, I, I do believe that you do need to mention the name of Jesus. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you can mention Jesus so much and then have a bad testimony and you're, you know, you're, you're unwitnessing. Right. You, know, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I think it's all about having a healthy balance. Um, yeah, yeah. Jesus, when when Jesus went went to the well, uh, when the Samaritan lady was there, you know, uh, I I don't really think he was there to to have a theological discourse. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I I think we're just approaching things a little bit wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Shamash is a Christian band. Our message is undeniably Christian, but I don't think our JPM rates are very good. <laughs> But are you sure? Are you sure you're not just Christians in a band? No, 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 no. We're, we're actually a Christian band, and we're also Christians too. Oh wow, you man, you you're you're admitting to both of them at the same time. That's awesome. Right? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, yeah. About your you launched your first band. You were the first Christian metal band to get signed in Asia. That's pretty awesome accomplishment. Hey. You know, yeah. fast forward now you got Shamash and you're you know, that's you got what two albums, second albums on the way out, or is it yeah, second so album. We, uh, 
Our first single uh, of, of the new albums coming out in April, April the 5th. Second okay. single on March the 10th. And then uh, the full drop, you're going to have to ask Jairus on that one. Okay. Awesome. So what other projects have you been involved in or are you involved with? What other, do you have other side projects? I've I've been in Vulture Scattering uh, together with Chess Bond and Ryan Roebuck. Oh, wow. So that one came on, uh, that one came on on Rocks Records. Uh, well, it's there, but I, I think it didn't really get as much of a wave as I was expecting, but it's okay. What, uh, you know, we, what's the name of that band? Vulture's Gathering. Vulture's Gathering. I remember that. Yeah, Vulture's Gathering. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that one's just, you know, uh, we set out to do music that, that that's the kind of music that we like. So there's no death growls in it, just singing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, odd time signatures, uh, kind of, you know, uh, has got some dream theater vibe to it a little bit. Okay. A little bit of Iron Maiden to it, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a totally different project. Um, I actually do have a black metal project that I finished. I finished an album, but I'm just sitting on it for a while because I think I just want to get all these other projects out first. Then I might let that one out. Do you want to tell? <laughs> do you want to tell everybody what the name of that one is? It's called Tritungal, which means Trinity in 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 the language in Malaysia. Oh, okay. Tritungal. Nice. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to be. Uh, I've actually uh, had a few tracks sung in in the national language of Malaysia as well. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I uh, yeah and I'm I'm also uh I I I did a few guests. I did a. Uh, I did a guest on the new uh, Motivic, so you'll probably hear me on one of the tracks. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Where so, we... yeah, I have it. There, there, are few, there, are, there are a few guests here and there. You know, I've just I've been keeping myself busy. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. I love to hear it. Yeah, for sure. So, um, well, I guess I was about to say what's next, but you have, you have so many projects uh, going on. I'm very excited about the black metal stuff. Um I've gotten a insider look <laughs> this, <laughs> this, some of the stuff, and yeah, Jimmy, I, you know, we'll have to uh, throw you in that conversation, guy, and uh, yeah. let you hear some of it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how many of the songs sound the same. That's what I'm gonna. Do. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't sound the same at all, and that's my problem. My problem is no song sounds the same. And all my albums sound like compilations. That's the problem. Yeah, dude, that's my well, my album is gonna definitely sound like a compilation. It's 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 like in a way that you know that will probably shock a lot of people. It's like, what is this? Like, you know, it's country one minute, it's like total black metal the next minute. It's like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Okay, so you know what? So live, live. Have you actually toured or uh, played music outside of Malaysia? No, only Malaysia. No, mm -hmm. only Malaysia. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get you out. <laughs> well, um, in, in 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 the nineties, there there was an opportunity, uh, possibly to play at uh at that time uh, at at Cornerstone, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, a, I mean, we we were gigging a lot in Malaysia, man. Uh, we were gigging a lot, but you know, like I said, it was just very untimely because six months after our album came out and we, we were touring, I ended up having that drinking problem, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, well, that's um, that's a that's that that in and of itself is actually an interesting uh subject. Um, I think about my time as a musician, and of course. Um, most of the music that I do hasn't been metal so far, and I'm trying to change that right now. But I've come across so many people that are Christians that have like addictions, and you know, some of them have overcome them. I have some great friends that have overcome can you know addictions and have very powerful testimonies. Um, mm -hmm. and then some people that have been on crack for like 30 years and counting. And it's like, what in the heck? So what would you say to people struggling with addictions about um, how to overcome them, especially those that are actually already saved? And then maybe those that aren't, you know, so to the, to the you know, something to say to the saved and then also to the unsaved. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to speak from experience. Um, I, I lived a life whereby it was all about the bottle, you know. Um, I sat down and I realized one day that I had drunk like 
a uh, 16 jugs of beer and like a whole like yeah. chunk of like tequila shots right uh, a whole night uh, and you know it was just an ungodly amount and i hear that when that really like stronger so <laughs> oh it is it's just as strong i mean but the, the the point is where I was doing a tally and I and, and, and I realized it, it it was a problem, right? And I remember um I I had a conversation with my pastor. Mm -hmm. Um it, it wasn't the easiest conversation. Um look, you're going over to a pastor and you're admitting that you have a problem. Right. And it's it's just, and you know, when you're given it over to the bottle, it, it's sin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh I, I basically told my, my and I, I was I was in a Presbyterian, I was in a sorry, I was in a Pentecostal church where you were you weren't allowed to drink. Oh no right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, to make it even worse, right? But but what I did was um I just didn't care about pride. Mm -hmm. I just went and I said, uh, I told my pastor I have this problem. Um and I need to fix myself. And um, you know. Uh, my my pastor at the time, uh, you know, I think the thing that was really, really good was he he told me one thing very interesting. He said, Andre, I can't help you. No, no program is going to help you, mm -hmm. but Jesus can help you. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, and that was the realization. Um, and so um, at that point of time, um, and I, I do thank the Lord. Uh, I mean, I also had a an understanding that if I'm going to minister and I'm going to represent the Lord. I I, I can do it with sin. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, uh, to me, uh, uh, music was sacred. It was it was an offering to him, and uh, a priest cannot be unclean and hold on to sacramental you know vestments that are holy. Mm. And you know, uh, and I said, God, uh, I love doing this, but you gotta help me. And he did. He did. So uh, I was I was free from all that, and I, I remember I was the kind of guy that if I didn't drink, my hands would shake. Wow! You know, yeah, I, I was kind of like given to the ball. So, um, and and so there was deliverance, and there's deliverance in Christ. There's deliverance in Christ's name, and I remember I, I'd cry up to God, like God help me, God help me, God help me. Only You can help me, and realizing that He could help and submitting to Him is the first step. Yeah. Yep, and that's basically the kind of journey I went through. Hmm. How, how, yeah. so I got, how, I, how long was that journey for you oh very quick two months clean wow that's awesome okay two months clean and what happened was um after i got clean i probably could have gone back to my band and stuff like that because it wasn't that long but the lord impressed on my heart that i needed to set time aside and and get my heart right and so that ended up being 22 years wow. yeah so i i kind of walked away from because. I, I really love metal, but I can also tell you that I, I also believe it's God because um, my heart wasn't right at that point of time. If I walked back immediately, the kind of pride and all the stuff that I had would have just killed me, mm -hmm. you know. So 23 years later, you know, I've been knocked around. I've been serving so much in church that it conditioned me. I'm still pretty much the same for me. Uh, Shamash is, is, is ministry. Yeah. You know, it's about reaching out to people and, you know, um, I remember I actually called one of my fans once. We had a video call like this and I prayed for the guy because to me, that's what Shamash is about. It's about yeah. reaching out to people. You know, it's not about, yeah, it's not about being rock stars, man. Come on. Let's not kid ourselves here. You know, we're not going to be Metallica. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but if, if if we can use the platform that God has given us to to witness to people, to share to people, or at least to 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 be there to to minister to people, I think that's that's important. You know, even if it's just one soul, that's good enough. You know, um, and I think I'm very clear about the vision. It's really about um, just being able to be a blessing to people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there, there are people out there that, you know, uh, they're not going to walk into a church and listen to a sermon. But they might listen to your song on Spotify. And, you know, that might be their one shot to, to, to hear a message that God had for them. So I think that that's basically what Shamash is about. That's awesome. Yep. That's very yeah, that's, that's definitely one of the most important parts about being a Christian metal band for sure. Like just, um, you know, reach the outreach. Um, you know, it's, you know, it, it definitely separates us from, um, I guess, secular metal bands. You know, the message, 
and living out that message, man. Like, wow. <laughs> it's also, yeah, it's, of course, it's a big responsibility too, man, to um, to be able to carry the name of Christ and, and live it out. I was thinking earlier when you were talking about, um, you know, we were talking about gatekeepers and all that stuff. And uh, so many people, you know, the commandment that says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God in vain. And a lot of people mm -hmm. take the Lord's name. And, um, you know, they they uh, they kind of do whatever with it. They become like self-righteous, you know what I'm saying? But the fruit from their uh, so-called walk with Christ is vanity because it doesn't produce any results. You know? That's right. And in fact, it becomes, right. it's more repellent than it is drawing anybody to Christ, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. That uh, that's the very, you know what, Jay? That's the very reason why I don't have any honky beloved Jesus on my car because I drive mm -hmm. like a madman, you know, <laughs> and I don't want people to curse Jesus because of the way I drive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it's just it, it's things like that, right? <laughs> do you think uh, that's, a, that's a good one? So, in your opinion, do you think that if you claim to be a ministry, a Christian, mm -hmm. man, are you held to mm -hmm. a higher standard, especially like, you know, on stage and and out on tour and things like that and in the the lyrical content the artwork what what are your, what are your thoughts on that my thoughts on that are yes to a certain degree um and and, and but but jimmy it, it, it's not an outlandish kind of thing because there are two sides to this coin on one end you have a community that 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 puts people on the pedestal okay and and people are just people right but for me it's the same kind of uh, a requirement as say if you're in worship band if you're in a worship band there's certain requirements that your church has for you right mm -hmm. like number one you just got you've got to be a praying person you know mm -hmm. um you, you know uh, you better not have public sins that people can call you out on you, oh, know, you better not Dude, you yes. better not cuss <laughs> you know you better not cuss and stuff like that right so i mean there's certain standards so yes we should be held to the same kind of standards because it's ministry right mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, right, we also come from a community, right, that has just pushed people into the limelight just because they're talented, right? Like what happened to bands like Rage of Angels and all that. They were great musicians and wow. they were young Christians and they were just pushed into the limelight and they did not know how to deal with it. Oh, so yeah. that, you, you know, you, we hear this story so many times in our community. You know, when we look at bands, we look at them like they're, you know, like they're pastors. They're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, right? that is such a good thing. And I think it even goes, I was thinking when you were talking about the addiction thing, um, a lot of, a lot of Christian bands, dude, you know, I, I hear, I'm not going to call any bands names out once again, but there's a certain band, a lot, you know, some of them fell away from the faith. Actually, there's two bands that were some of the most popular Christian metal bands of all time. And mm -hmm. their members, you know, their lead singers, definitely, uh, are if if I'm not mistaken, they're both non-believers now. And you know, one of the things that they were doing, they were put on the pedestal for sure, like you were saying, as young bands, and some they fell into some of the traps of the world, especially addictions. I know one, yeah, yeah, they both said they were addicted to drugs for sure. And you know, and around that time they became addicted. They um, you know, they they kind of abandoned the faith. And just uh, deconstruct their faith. That's that's yeah, the, yeah, they were yeah, we're doing, but that's yes, the the drugs, you know. Yeah. crazy man I'm, I'm just so tired of hearing this word deconstruction you know Dude. i mean um just about every metal core band that started off christian today is not yeah. christian and those are the ones you i'm know, speaking of i'm speaking of those guys yeah they, they yeah, both yeah. Fell, you know, they fell in the Crazy. Yeah, and, and you know, and and you know, you also have guys that would you know have hide killers go after their wives to kill them yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's another one. Fell into addiction, that, and that's yeah, why so, you know that's why I asked you the question earlier about you know. Yeah, but that's from. because we put these guys on the pedestal. They don't belong yeah. there because remember, at the end of the day, right? Who should be on? Who should be on that step? Who should be on that throne? I'm so sorry. Not some lead vocalist or not some guitarist or whatever. This it's mm -hmm. got to be Jesus. Yeah, it does. It really is. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I think we, we quite clearly have our look, we gotta have standards, but we, we we by no means do we elevate people to that kind of level whereby we idolize them because that's wrong. You know, uh we're all humans. Brother, all have fallen short of the glory of God, man. Every single one of us. Let no one be a liar and, and say that they're perfect, right? 
Yeah. Um, you know, we, we all have our issues. We're all a work in progress. We stop being a work in progress when we die and get translated into our new body in heaven. Mm. you know yeah. so i think it's it's not my place to be holier than thou and go around and pointing out everybody's sins when i have a heap of my own personal sins to deal with you know yeah but but nonetheless christ died for us and we are transformed daily yes sir and you know I, and i think it's only important that we we have that kind of standards in our mind and try to live the best that we can but mm. not be idol uh, idolatry in any way yeah yeah i think you the daily part, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, just like with anything else, if you're working out or if you're doing whatever, whatever you feed your, you know, whatever part of you that you feed, like if you're feeding your body junk food or whatever, then, you know, you're going to be, you know, yeah. fat or whatever. Or if you, you know, if you're feeding your spirit. Uh, let me rephrase that for you. If you eat fat, greasy food, you'll be a fat, greasy dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, so it's like, you know, feeding your spirit obviously is way more important because you know Jesus said it's not what you put in your body; it's about what comes out. You know that defiles you. Yeah, and yeah, you know, and yeah. You know, so we have to feed our spirit, and I think a lot of times it definitely, um, you know, it's it's tempting sometimes. I think about like me and my wife. You know, we're like reading the Bible like every night, but you know, there's there's some nights where we're like so tired. You know, say that we don't, we don't, we, we might not get to read that night or whatever, or we'll be reading and fall asleep on it. But yo, it's like, even, even if you do that, like, you have to like get back into it the next day because you could get to a point where it's like, oh, dang, it's been a year and we haven't read the Bible, you know, or right. whatever. So it's you, definitely, man. definitely something we have to do daily. Like, so feed, feed our spirits, man, because yeah, there's, there's so many temptations, especially doing music you know even doing like when i was just doing jazz you know it's like there's just temptations everywhere man there's, <laughs> and, no, e there's no evil in jazz come on <laughs> man jazz was the original devil's music man oh you ain't wrong <laughs> I, I i thought it was blues man i thought it was the blues yeah, yeah both of those you know both of them man yeah, yeah but well, i don't know um, that <laughs> Look, uh, to me, music ain't it, it ain't good, it ain't evil. I think it's just neutral. Yeah, it's it's just really just the heart behind it. It's it's a you tool. Know, uh, it's like money. It's not good or absolutely. evil. It's how you use it, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I I think uh, it's a very important thing for us. I think that I I feel the scene really needs is heart. Mm -hmm. I think you know uh, it's great that we're dedicated to a craft and we want better music and stuff like that. But I I also feel that we just need a bit more heart. You know, I think we've, I, I feel that we've kind of been losing that collectively in the scene. And I, I think it'll be nice to just really. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Heart, you know, uh, you know how it was, you know, like when you watch that, that whole, uh, you know, uh, Jesus uh, people movement, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people were doing it because they just wanted Jesus to be famous, to be known. You know what I mean? It was all about Jesus. Yeah. But I think in, in the scene that we're in right now, it's all about, oh, I just want to be, I want to be good at what I'm doing. I want to be famous. Nothing wrong with that. But so where, does, where, does Christ, where does Christ sit in that equation? It, it's evolved to where it's not as authentic as it was before. Is that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I, I think it would be nice to have the scene kind of go back to that kind of, you know, uh, what it was in the seventies movement with the you know the original guys. What's your what's your purpose and motivation for what you're doing, right? That's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Well, well, yeah. So here's um a question that I ask to everyone at the end of the show just about, and that is what's your favorite thing about being a Christian? What's my favorite thing about being a Christian? Wow, that's a very broad question. Okay, honestly, uh, well, it is a very liberating thing. It's also a very heavy thing, uh, you know, being a Christian, because there's just so much burden to being a Christian. Mm. Uh, you know, the fact that you know the truth of Christ, and uh, you know it's so real that it hurts. You know, um, mm. if, I, if, I, if I was any other faith, I could just live my life and not, care about my faith so much and have it just be personal but the thing about being a christian is 
it's so real, it's so heavy in your heart that you have to tell people about it, and that's where it gets difficult. Yeah, yeah. If you know what I mean, uh, Christ is not something that you can just bottle in you. It has to, you know, it just comes out. You know, like I cannot just sit down. You know, I'll be the kind of guy that I'll go sit down uh, in a bus stop, and there'll be a guy sitting next to me in, in a station or whatever it is, and all of a sudden, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll feel something like, "Hey, go talk to this person." Mm. You know, if 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 I wasn't a Christian, I probably wouldn't feel compelled to do that. Uh, but the thing about Christianity is that you you just can't keep it in your body. You can't keep it in your bones. It hurts. You know, you you just have to go and tell someone about it. And I think that's the biggest burden about being a Christian. And it's also one of the greatest joy of being a Christian because it's really hard and difficult to do that. But when you open your mouth and speak and when God takes over and when that person, you know, listens and his life is transformed right before you and that burden becomes such a joy. And I think that's really what's amazing about Christianity for me. Okay. That's awesome, man. So what can the Christian metal group and community do to support you and your band and your ministry? Wow. Um, actually, it's pretty much the other way. Is what can we do to support the community? No, no, no that's the question. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole purpose, but I, I, I know what you mean. Uh, well, hey, just listen to the songs and listen to the lyrics and hopefully minister to you. I mean, look, and if you think it's something really cool, just, you know, let a friend know about it, you know. Awesome. Um, like I said, we're, we're just there to minister to people. Uh, it's a ministering tool. Uh, please use it as a ministering tool. And, and this new album is going to be released on Rottweiler Record? On Rottweiler. So, so there'll be two to, singles. Yeah, go to Rottweiler, buy the music, yeah. share it, and listen to it. Listen to it. If you know someone that could really benefit from the album and, you know, if purchasing is going to be a problem, reach out to me. That's good. Awesome. Yep. Man. I appreciate it. Anything else, Jay? I think that's it. It's a wrap, Doctor. All right, Andre, I appreciate your time, man. I hope you have a yes, great day. I really do. Yes, absolutely.